U.S. voters will elect a new president in 2016. Primaries begin on February 1st with the Iowa caucus, followed by the New Hampshire primary on February 9th. A lot could happen between now and then. But both parties have a clear front runner going into the new year. Donald Trump continues to dominate the GOP field, and Hillary Clinton holds a significant lead on the Democratic side. For more, I'm joined by Jessica Taylor, lead digital political reporter for NPR. Jessica, let's start with Teflon Don. No one except maybe Donald Trump predicts that predicted this. Columnists keep writing his political obituary. Trump keeps making controversial statements, but his lead is huge. So what can we anticipate once primary season really gets going? I mean, right, if you, if you were a pundit in 2015, probably the biggest miss is that you thought that Donald Trump was going to fade, and a lot of us did. But his um, his support is really sort of wide, and it's broad. He's reaching a lot of people that um, make up the Republican base and bringing in some new people. But I will say, you know, while he leads national polling, the way that Republicans and Democrats nominate a candidate is not on the national level. So he has to go through these early states. And if you look at sort of where the calendar goes that you detailed, Iowa and New Hampshire, that's where some of his problems could come in. Now, Iowa especially, um, he, had, he had a lead there early on, but that has sort of dissipated. And we've seen uh, Ted Cruz, the Texas conservative senator, really sort of creep up on him there. Um, a lot of polls show that Cruz is ahead now, and that's largely because of um, Iowa Republicans' evangelical voters. He's gotten some key endorsements there. He's really sort of playing hard um, in the state. Um, people we've talked talk to say that, you know, if if Trump brings in maybe new people that um, wouldn't caucus, that's sort of something that they can't really measure and that could be something critical. But I mean, remember, these are um, these are older voters that come and, uh, you know, so they, you know, it really could be interesting to see who turns out there. Well, you could also make a case for the nickname Teflon Hillary. She weathered a series of Benghazi hearings and an investigation into her private email server. Are these non-issues in 2016? Well, they really haven't been in the Democratic primary, and that's because her top opponent, Bernie Sanders, has really sort of declined to take her on. He's been given shots in, uh, the, in the debates and things, too, to try to hit her over that. He sort of declined, and you know they really haven't been an issue in the Democratic primary. Where they could become an issue is in the general election, if she is the nominee, as most people expect that she will be. You know, the Clinton name, I mean, she is universal name ID and people sort of have already preconceived notions of her and she has a lot of very high unfavorables. I think that's why it makes it so much more important who Republicans nominate. If they nominate someone with similar high unfavorables like a Ted Cruz or a Donald Trump, that's where that doesn't make as much of a difference for Hillary. You've got to admit Trump is smart though. His people are they're acting as though he's already got the nomination because he's not worrying about Jeb Bush trying to have a debate with him. He's going straight for Hillary, which is really, you know, smart for the for the mm -hmm. Trump campaign. Now the U.S. House of Representatives Representatives could also have a dramatic impact on the 2016 election. Paul Ryan replaced John Boehner as House Speaker. He's promised to return to order, a more inclusive GOP, and fresh ideas from the right. What's at stake here? I mean, one thing about Congress in an election year is they don't really get much done. In fact, they're only in session about 13 weeks next year, and that's because they traditionally take August off. They take October off right before the election, and then this year they're off most of July as well because the presidential nominating conventions have been pushed back. So they have really a small window to do things. I mean, I think we'll see them do basic things like fund the government, raise the debt ceiling, and that's where those fights with between the Republican establishment and conservatives have come into play that you could see. But I think largely, you know, they're going to be reacting to what's happening on the campaign trail. The focus really is not on what's going on legislatively this coming year. That's for sure. All right, Jessica, before you go, I'd like to talk about President Obama. He's a lame duck, but he still commands a big stage. Obama says he'll keep playing offense for his final year in office. What should we expect? Well, again, I mean, the focus is not going to be on him, and it's really going to be, uh, you know, on the campaign trail there and what's going on in his party. But, and, you know, some of the domestic things that he would like to get done, I think, are going to be overshadowed by some of the international um, and national security concerns that we've seen. You know, he's tried to make headway on gun control. That hasn't gone anywhere. I think you'll see him try to make a climate change push after, we come, after we've come out of the Paris Climate Accord that's been reached and see how that can go. And some of his trade 
trade proposals. But then again, you know, if there is the threat of another attack or, God forbid, something happens, I think that's certainly where you're going to see his focus. And, you know, that's where um, a lot of uh, Americans really see that he hasn't been as effective when it's talking about ISIS, when it's saying what he would do. And so I think, you know, he came into office not wanting to sort of be this foreign policy president, but he's certainly been pushed in that direction. You're exactly right. Jessica Taylor, lead digital political reporter for NPR. Thanks, Jessica. Thanks, Morris.